It's Wednesday, May 18th, 2011. As you can see, very soon to be Thursday, May 19th. Uh, and today we're going to be taking a look at uh, Pingai OS 11.04. <laughs> If you remember, a few months back we did take a look at the previous version of Pingai OS. As you can probably tell, this is based on Ubuntu 11.04, as the name implies. Basically, Pingai OS is you take a version of Ubuntu, you put a ton of applications on it to try to make it appeal to as many people as possible with a not a huge file size, but a lot bigger than the default Ubuntu ISO size. Uh, the default download is a 1.4 gigabyte DVD, so it's not as big as it could be, but it is a lot bigger than the default Ubuntu. Uh, but at the same time, it does come with a lot of applications pre-installed and a much different look and feel than what you're probably accustomed to. If you do want to learn more about Pingai itself, definitely take a look at the previous video I did on it. I went into a lot of the specifics about what makes it unique. You've got the docs here on the side and the bottom. You've got the min menu in the upper left hand corner. The global menu that stays up here and shows your applications all the time and does not go wonky and stop working like the uh, default 11.04 global menu does. Uh, you've got a background downloader, a background changer, which apparently is turned off on this newest version. It used to automatically change through a bunch of different backgrounds by default. That's one of the things that kind of annoyed me about the old version, so definitely a thumbs up from me there. A bunch of other preloaded, pre-running applications like GNOME Do, which is extremely useful if you haven't used it before. Uh, you've got the Mint Updater, which a lot of people do prefer to the Ubuntu one because it's a little bit faster, a little bit leaner. Uh, you've got a clipboard manager, I do, do believe. You've got the workspace manager, uh, of course, your traditional icons up here. One thing that has changed with this 11.04 version, though, in the Me menu, they've actually integrated Skype, so you can go through and do all of your Skype settings there and your, uh, I guess, your Skype management as well. So that is definitely a step in an awesome direction. More things being added to this menu is a step toward Ubuntu 11.10, because I believe that's also where they're going. Now, one of the things they do mention in the release notes over on webupdate.org is that there are quite a few new applications that are default in this version. We've got Ultra Copier, Oracle Java, we've got Rapid Photo Downloader, XBMC, Vino, WX Banker Finance Manager, and Vineyard, and probably more than that, as well as a live USB installer that's not the default Ubuntu one, and it's not UNet Bootin. So let's go ahead and just look real quick at the applications list. I'm not going to read them all off to you or anything. Uh, you see here we do, like I said, have the Mint menu that uh, a lot of people do know and love. If you right-click on it, you should be able to go in and edit the menu, make changes to it, all of that fun sort of stuff. That's just editing what's in the menu. There we go. Preferences should be able to change the look and feel of the menu, just like you can in Mint 10 and hopefully now Mint 11. But let's go ahead and look through this list and just see what's new, see what's changed, see what stands out. Now, the first thing, of course, we've got Conky. Now, if you're not familiar with Conky, this is Conky over here on the right-hand side. shows a lot of system information. In this Conky app, which was actually, if I remember correctly, written by Pingai, the guy that put together the OS, we've got the option to use one theme, another theme, uh, start or kill Conky, fix Conky if it is showing up above Windows, uh, remove Conky from the startup, add it back to the startup if you do want it back, and delay it just in case it's taking too, or in case it's not taking long enough to start up. Now, one complaint I do have about this so far is it doesn't have a way to apply it without closing. So, for example, if I wanted to restart Conky instead of just stopping it or starting it, I could say kill Conky, but I can't actually apply it without the whole box going away. It's a simple matter to restart it. See, I just come back here and hit start Conky. But, uh, yeah, that's just one of those things that would be kind of nice to have without having, uh, having to restart that application. Well, that was a bit odd. Apparently, either I had not used Ping iOS for long enough to see that it did still change wallpapers by default, or it hadn't decided to download it until I came up here and told it to actually look through the Web Builder thing. Uh, but it just, like like you saw there, it randomly changed wallpapers on me, and it's actually kind of late at night here, so that was kind of creepy, the, the wallpaper it went to. Anyway, back to our list of applications. Let's see, moving on down. DJL, this is supposed to be like a Steam game manager for Linux, but it doesn't have any of the Valve games or anything. It's just got a load of, I believe, free and open source games in it. Let's just see. If I go ahead and hit save, 
here we go. We've got a list of games that are available. Uh, it looks like it is using Wine to pull down the games, so my mistake there. It's it's not free and open source games. You've got this repository full of all sorts of games, not just free and open source. On the Uranus Slick Precipice of Darkness, for example, that's one created by the guys who started Penny Arcade, an awesome webcomic if you haven't seen it. But this is the way that you could download and install it on Linux. Moving on down the list, we've got our docky settings, so if you wanted to change something on the side or the bottom, you could definitely do that. Frostwire, just in case you want to torrent something. Lassie, just in case you have a CD-DVD labeler that you want to label CDs and DVDs with. Uh, Lightscribe, for the same sort of purpose. Live USB install, this is something I've not actually had a reason to use yet, uh, but it does look interesting after looking at it. That's another thing to mention. You notice the, uh, the icon, the scrolling circle there. I believe that's pulled directly from OS X. Uh, that's one of the things I think Pingai was going for that I forgot to mention in the previous video about it. Uh, integrating Ubuntu with a Mac look and feel with uh, just sort of a crossover look and feel. But with this Live USB install, you can pick whatever distro you want from this really, really big list and say, pull it down, install it. Ooh, Android x86 is in there. That's interesting. You can say, pull it from the internet, pull it from an ISO or a CD and install it to whatever USB you want if you have one. So that's very, very useful. Uh, just a, an alternative to UNet bootin'. Back in our list here though, you see we've got LXBD player, a Blu-ray player, I believe from LXDE. Very nice to have that by default, and I think it was in the previous version. Moving on down, we've got a Notify OSD configurator. So if you would not like your Notify OSD where it is, you see by default it's over here. You could move it somewhere else. You could make it a different color. Let's say I'm just gonna make it red. Apply. Ooh, it's an ugly red now. Awesome. Now it's back to dark gray. So very quick and easy to change. Sorry running through this kind of fast, but just wanting to cover everything. OpenShot Video Editor instead of the PTV default editor. That's a step in the right direction because Ubuntu's already said they will probably remove PTV from the default install in 11.10 anyway. That's the other thing to mention now that I see VirtualBox here. VirtualBox editions were installed by default. Thank you so much to Pingai for that. Makes it a whole lot easier on people like myself who do review these. Oh look, a new version of VirtualBox is out. I'll have to get that later tonight. But back in here, what else do we have? Play on Linux. So we do have a little bit more wine coverage than uh, than we previously did, I would believe. Rapid Photo Downloader. Downloads photos and videos from your camera, memory cards, and portable storage devices. I don't actually have any of those in the virtual machine, so I can't really test it. But it is nice to have that, just in case. Moving on down though, of course, we've got Skype, we've got Java pre-installed, so that's useful. TeamViewer, just in case you do want to remote control another system or have someone remote control you, TeamViewer is a way to do it. I believe this one actually runs within Wine though, so uh, I, I don't know. I thought there was a Linux native version, but I, I don't know. I don't use it much. Uh, actually, I don't think I've ever really gotten a chance to use it, but... There we go, it is running, and it's running within Wine, I believe. Yeah, so I'm going to tell it no, just close out, be done with it for now. Moving on down, we do have Ubuntu One, Ubuntu Software Center, and Ubuntu Tweak, so that's terribly, terribly useful there to have all those Ubuntu apps pre-installed. We've got Ultra Copier, which allows you to copy and move files with a load of options. Up here you see that Ultra Copier did open. You can say Add and Move Copying. Add Copying, we're going to tell it to copy a whole thing of files if you want to put more things in open a whole folder and copy it to another place. Definitely seems like a useful application. I tend to do those things in the terminal myself, but if you're not comfortable and familiar with that, that's one way to do it. Uh, Windows, you can set your Windows properties. There you go. Vino is a remote desktop type application, allows people to remote into you. I thought it was included in Ubuntu by default, but maybe uh, maybe that was an older version. VLC, wonderful media player, Wine Tricks, again another uh, way to do a lot of stuff with Wine easily. WX Banker will be terribly useful if you if you do manage your own finances, and I did see earlier you can have it integrate with Mint.com, which is a very nice option there. Not not a site that I've ever had a reason to use. My wife and my mother are both accountants, so never mind about that and XBMC Media Center. And that's a, a very useful app if you've got a bunch of media on a computer and you want it installed by default. There you go, XBMC. I'm moving through it with the keyboard. And actually, in VirtualBox, it's running really smoothly. I was surprised. Uh, the mouse is not terribly useful in here, but the keyboard does allow me to do everything I need to. So I've gone ahead and hit exit, hopefully. There we go. And now I'm back at the desktop, and for some reason, Docky went away. Not terribly concerned at the moment, though. 
But basically, that's about all I have to say about Pingai OS. There do appear to be a couple of little quirks to it. Uh, the install Pingai OS icon should not be there because I've actually got it installed and I don't have the disk in the system, so I don't know if that should be there or not. As you can see, the Docky and Conky stuff did go away, and I don't recall telling it to go away, so that might be a bug. It might be just something going on with my system. I'm sure it will come back after a reboot, so I'm not terribly concerned there. Very nice to have this global menu if I didn't mention it before. This is not the one that comes standard with Ubuntu 11.04, so it does actually stay up there all the time, stays consistent all the time. Very, very nice to have that. Uh, so basically, if you're looking for an installation that has a load of pre-installed software, and you can always go back through this video at a higher quality just to take a look at all of these installed applications because I don't, don't have six hours to read through every one of them for you. If you want all of those kinds of applications, you want a uh, look and feel that, uh, I guess it appeals to a certain type of person, not necessarily to me, but I'm more minimalist than this, but I know it does appeal to a lot of people, then Ping iOS might be for you. Go ahead and head over to their website. I will have the link in the video description. Uh, if you want to, let me know what you think about it in the comment section below. As always, though, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.